Hello, this is Daniel King reporting on round eight of the Istanbul Olympiad. Today, Russia faced Ukraine. This is the one we've been waiting for. Of course, Russia are the number one seeds in the tournament. Ukraine are the number two seeds and defending champion. And it turned out to be a great fight going right down to the wire. And my play of the day is the board three game between Sergei Karyakin and Volokitin. Karyakin, of course, representing Russia, but he used to represent Ukraine, just to add a little spice to this encounter. Now, Karyakin had the advantage out of the opening. It was a very long end game indeed, and Volokitin clung on tooth and nail. Finally, they reached this position after 43 moves. You can see that Karyakin with the white pieces is two pawns up. He's got three pawns against this one pawn here. Volokitin found a way to simplify. He took the bishop on e7. So wins, in fact, both pawns back. So it's now rook and one against rook and one. It couldn't be closer. But of course, there's only one player that can win this, and that's white. Because his king is right next to this pawn, and black's king is far from the action. How did white play this? Well, of course, that pawn can't be taken at the moment. If king takes f6, then rook f4 wins the pawn back. And if rook e6, this would be a mistake. It's the obvious move, but it's a poor move, because then black's king returns. And after rook takes f6, king e7, and the king gets back. And this should be a draw. For example, if the rook moves over this side, then simply king f7, and this is going to be a draw. The king is in exactly the right spot in front of white's pawn. But Karyakin had this one mapped out, and he had clearly planned this move well in advance. He played rook e4, an excellent move. Well, first of all, we should have a look at what happens on rook takes rook. Well, it's clear that this king and pawn ending is winning for white because we can take this pawn and we win the opposition and the pawn will go through. Okay, that's the easy one. So what happens on rook h6? Well, then white would cut the king off and then you round up the pawn with f4 and king e6 and f5 and the king is just too far away. Well, something similar happens in the game. Instead of that, black played rook h8. And the pawn still can't be taken because of rook f8. But instead, Karyakin played rook d4, an excellent move. So now this makes sure that the king can't come back to reach a drawing position. The king is cut off, as we say. Excellent move. Well, what happens on rook f8 defending the pawn? Then white will slowly improve the position. In fact, you can move the rook in here. And this position is a win. We'll see something similar happens in the game. For example, rook here, and you give a check. Uh, well, you move, <laughs> move the king and then give a check. And the rook switches across. And, well, the king is on the wrong side, basically. In order to draw, the rook should be over this side, and the king should be over here on the short side. And white will win that one. Let's go back. So, Volokitin tried king c5, okay? The rook just nudged back, making sure the king is still cut. And yeah, if rook h6, well, white just chugs forward again, and this is a simple win, actually. And rook a6, for example, and then this motif of cutting off the king is so common indeed. This time it's cut off horizontally. Okay, rook a8 was played. Now, I can understand why black went for this, because you want to try and give the rook checking distance. And then that way you can hassle the white king. The problem is that black's king still gets in the way. Okay. F4 was played. So slowly advancing. 
and now rook d7, that's an excellent move. The rook has to switch over in order to take this pawn, but it doesn't go too far, and actually the king is still cut off, this time along the seventh rank, so the king can't get back. Okay. Rook takes king e7, and now king g6, and in a sense this king is still cut off, it can't get in front of the pawn, and this rook can't hassle the king for the moment. Rook a1, and now a check. Now if the king advances, then f5, and we check the king away, and that's a very, very easy win. So king e8 was played, and f5, so everything is nicely together. What happens if black waits? Well then we can switch the rook across. Note the king still can't really get back because we, we just check the king away. So okay, let's say rook c1, just waiting again, and we check, and f6, and well, this is a very standard kind of position. Black's king is in exactly the wrong place. And, well, we can move the rook back, check the king away, and that'll give the king room to move to the side. This is a very standard position. Well, it's going to be Lucena's position for those uh, theorists among you. OK, king f6. Rook here, and the rook switches across. Again, the king can't cross. Well, that would even be mate in this position. Check. And now the last difficult move. Actually, a very standard position. Rook f8. That means the pawn is now protected, so the king can move to the side, and then the pawn can advance. Rook h2, king g7. So you notice how everything moves up together. F6. Now that's a good move. And the rook just gives itself some space. Now we're ready to check the king away. In this position, black resigned. It's very easy. Let's just see what might happen. For example, rook here. We check the king away. We can move to the side. Here, okay, the rook checks. Here, okay, the rook waits. Here, say the rook waits. And now we could just play rook g1, and on the next turn, king g8 and f8, and that's a queen. So, Karyakin won. Um, Ponomarev and Grishuk drew their game, um, and Timoshenko and Moiseenko drew their game. So that left one game remaining, Kramnik against Ivanchuk. Now Ivanchuk managed to get the advantage, but couldn't quite grind down Kramnik. It was a very long game, but Kramnik just held on to a draw. So Russia won the match, two and a half, one and a half. They have 15 points now. And they're two points clear of, well, five teams. China, Armenia, USA, Germany and the Philippines are all on 13 points. So with three rounds to go, Russia have a clear lead. And they've played, well, most of the top teams. They have a tough test tomorrow against the USA, but Russia are clear favourites. Join me for another play of the day soon. Thanks very much for watching.